Hello and welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. And we are going to review the Backyardigans. I mean, bug cancel of Backyardia. Who's your favorite Backyardigan? Comment below. Like. Subscribe. Smash that bell. Hit that like button. Ding, 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 subscribe ding, ding, ding. Uh, to the Backyardigans. So, I don't know. So this is a trick-taking game it here. Is. Uh, that I was I was interested in because it says it advertises itself as being a mix of trick taking and mancala. That last part is is a, a tad bit overblown. I think not overblown. It does in fact mancala around a little bit, but its use mm. is important but minimal. I think the real point Chris is trying to say is that we'll show you. Here's Bug Council of Backyardia set up on the table. This is a trick taking game, meaning that each player has a hand of cards they're keeping secret from the other players but I'm going to be showing mine face up so that you can take this seat here as I explain to you the game. There are five different suits here with a different number of cubes on them that are going to match the five suits of the cards in your hand, and this is going to show which of them is the strongest. So right now the bees have four on them, the ants have zero, but that's going to change over the course of each card played. So as in many trick-taking games, one player will be the first one to reveal a card, in this case a B, because it's the strongest suit here, uh, and they can choose whichever one they want to play. I then, in this game, have to follow suit if I have it. Since I have a yellow, I do have to play it out, and the last player will also play one. Now that all players in the game have revealed, have contributed one card to this trick, you'll determine the winner of the trick, the highest card uh, of the highest strength is out there, that's going to win. However, one little mix-up is that since I play the lowest ranked card out of all of these, I get to change the power of the suits out here. I can t do the Mancala type move, where I would take all of the cubes from one space and distribute them around clockwise until all of the cubes have been placed out. I now have changed the relative power of all of the suits. Since this player won the trick, they'll keep it face down over here in front of them. Let me show you what one more trick looks like now that the power dynamic has changed. Let's say that this player is doing a bad move and they're playing out this yellow card, even though now it's the weakest suit. Since I don't have yellow in my cards anymore, I can play any card that I want to. And let's say that I play this blue two. The uh, fleas over here, they're much stronger than the yellows. This player still has a yellow card, so they have to follow suit if they can meaning that I have the strongest card here. It's not the first suit that was led, but looking at the power dynamic here, this is the strongest of the cards that are out. So I'll win this trick. The player here to my left played the weakest card of any of the cards out there on the table. So they'll get to pick up all of these cubes and move stuff around. I would collect this trick. Now you keep playing cards out until ultimately players only have two cards left in hand. Uh, at this point, you'll play cards out, continue along, every player will likely have one card left in hand, and they get to score one point for every trick that they've won, and one point for every one of the, uh, for every cube sitting on this spot of the card that they have sitting left in their hand. You'll play three rounds like this. Now there is one little ripple that I want to explain, one little change up. That's what's normally going to happen, is that you will have one card left over and you'll score bonus points according to their strength. But at the start of each round, now that you understand how the game flow goes, at the start of each round, after looking at your hand, after looking at the board state, you can choose whether you want to do that, that's the normal scoring bonus, or you can choose to do what's called a nil bid or a zero bid. You can wager and say, I think I'm going to win no tricks this entire hand of cards. If I do, I will score 10 points. Plus, if there are ever any cubes that make it here to the middle, then you'll score additional points for those as well. And that'll happen if when you're redistributing cubes, you pick them all up, you move them around in the circle, you drop one off to every space, but every extra cube that w has gone around an entire cycle now, these extra will go here into the middle, meaning that if I hit my nil bid, not only do I get 10 points, I get two bonus points. The game is played over three rounds, and whoever has the most points at the end of three rounds is going to be the winner of Bug Council of Backyardia. It should also be noted that the game comes with a two-player variant board that you can use here, as well as a solo mode that is pretty involved and involves a few different strengths of cards. The two-player mode is also pretty involved, and we'll be talking about this in the review. Chris, you were talking about Mancala. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and hop back to that. What was your point that you were trying to make? No, no, so, I mean, the point that I made was that it's 
Mancala, right? Uh, it's not it's not a Mancala game and a trick taking. It's a trick taking game primarily, right? And it has okay. that little bit of Mancala ing where you drop off the cubes around. Uh, it changes the relative strength of each of the different suits, which mm-hmm. I enjoy that idea perhaps more in in practice than in play. I think it is okay. interesting. There's other trick taking games that will do that. Uh, Thrones of Valeria is one that came out very recently, where the power of the different suits would shift throughout. Yeah, sure. I think that it's clever, and the reason yes. why I think that it's really clever is because oftentimes in the trick taking game, you have the most power if you're the person who starts the trick, wins the trick, you can start the next trick, kind of thing. So winning is so very important. Whereas this, you have a lot of power. When you lose, you want to lose the lowest. Yes. So it adds a lot of value to those low cards, which you don't get in the average trick-taking game. A normal, whatever, like hearts or something, you're like, I don't really care about my aces, ones and twos and whatever. I'm just going to throw them in as my throwaway cards. Aces are high. Okay, aces are high. Take it all back. It depends on the game. It depends Um, on the game, right? It depends on the game, right? But that, I think, is really clever. And so I... I feel like I can accept the chaos in this because I appreciate that that there's a reason for the chaos. And And there is a little bit more control in just a different part of the game. And it's not even just that the twos are inherently weaker because the two of the suit that has the most cubes on it is stronger than the, you know, ten of the suit that is in the weakest position. Sure. So it it makes you have to play this trick taking. It It makes you approach it with a different mindset than you're used to. It's Mm -hmm. not that there's a trump suit, it's that every suit is ranked, and that rank will change over the course of each hand. Yeah. So uh, for some people, I think that that might feel a little bit too chaotic. It certainly did with several of the people that we taught this one to. Um, Yeah. they, They bounce off of it hard. I'm kind of in the middle. I appreciate the chaos of it. I appreciate a lot the idea that best card, important, obviously, Le- the the least powerful card imp- is also important. Kind of reminds me of David and Goliath in that way, which you know what? That's a good. That's a really good trick taking game to kind of draw some inspiration from because yes, it means that all of your cards have different values throughout each hand. I think for me, because I I do enjoy the playing of the game. I think the weakest part for me is the end of each round. That final hand, that final trick, whoever is lowest basically gets to screw over everybody that had the biggest pile. Like, why would you not pick up the biggest pile and move it around unless you had that? But also, if you're playing the lowest card, you know you're probably going to be the lowest, at least if you're trying for it. You're probably going to be the lowest, which means you're going to try to get rid of that card because you want to mess everybody else up and you want to get points. Well, see, and this is where the, a bit of the chaos ensues from, is that, yeah, if you have the lowest card going to the last round, where you always have two cards going into it, but what is the lowest ranked suit going into the last round? Well, that, determ- that de- is determined on the penultimate round, who played lowest there. Sure. So it, it turns into this, like, multiple steps back of a, a kind of a thing. I, I generally like what's going on, and I generally like trick-taking games. I think that this one, for me, is, like... It's really fun. I like the theme, the artwork, the, the the board in the center, I think, does a good job of keeping track of everything. But there's just a few too many little butts in there for, for me, for my tastes. Okay, interesting. Speaking of board, actually, before we hop into scores, because mm-hmm. I feel like that was a good score moment, but um, the board super looks modular. It is not modular. It's not. It breaks into a bunch of pieces, but the score track has to be in order, so that means... The actual factions have to be in an order. And honestly, if you mix the factions up anyways, which you could, um, that makes I don't no really difference. be the point. Yeah, other than you're like, oh, when I'm on Kala, it it goes in a different order. It is funny. And this is not going to affect my score by no. any means, right? But it's weird that you have to assemble this and you have to find the right bug token to put into this slot here. And you have to put the right number of circle right here next to the... Get the track and order kind of thing. Right. On the back, it does show the order one, two, three, four, five. But it's funny that the only reason that this is modular looking is so that you can shuffle all of these bug tiles at the beginning and then randomize which one is going to get the most cubes at the start of the game. And then it goes into its like predetermined slot. And I think that's 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 the method you came up with. There's a whole deck of cards that are those five suits. Just flip over cards. So anyway, sure. that's just a weird little note. 
if you're watching this and you're, and you're thinking of weird, clever ways to determine start of game conditions, just use what you already have. <laughs> now, there is a two-player version of this that Chris and I did play. We don't recommend it. Well, I'm Not speaking for you, but no. I presume. Um, it is fiddly, and it is... It's confusing, frankly. It's like if I win the trick, then I move this here versus when I lose the trick. And when does it swap sides and you become it, but you're minus it? It's confusing. It's not It's not straightforward. It's not going to affect my score of no, the game. Yeah, yeah. It's just I, I'm not recommending this as a two-player. I always like looking for fun little two-player variants, two trick-taking games, because we, we play, play so many a lot games of together. Two? Absolutely. This so one did not win. Not one that I would necessarily recommend uh, two-player, the solo mode also uh, I involved. So, but as a three, four, five player game, let's mm -hmm. go into scores then. Okay, what's your score? So I'm giving this one a 6.5. This one for me is just shy of like a general recommendation, but let me be clear that this is, this sounds so weird, but this is for me like a very high 6.5. This is like a 6.8 almost, if you would, right? But I'm not <laughs> that close, huh? I'm not doing that, right? But. Uh, for me, I like this one. I have a lot of fun with it. I will play it, but it's not one that I'm going to recommend because I think it does lose people when they say, like, I, I don't get it. Also, all of a sudden now green is worthless. Like, no, it's not worthless. It's just n now it gives you control of which one you want to, you know, if you have a lot of green in hand, you know what I mean? You have to kind of explain to people the shifting dynamic, and a lot of people get turned off by it to the point where I play it, I have fun with it, but it's not... It's not one that I'm excited to teach people, and that's kind of, I guess, what I'm looking for in a trick-taking game. But if you want something a little bit more esoteric and different, that's what this one does very well, which is why I can almost recommend it. 6.5 for me. Okay, I'm going to give it a 7 because I will okay. recommend it. Because I do think that it's unique and creative. There are some trick-taking games that I feel like they get overly convoluted. This one sure has a little bit of like, oh, okay, I have to think differently about waiting the tricks. And I have to think about lowest, do I want to be the lowest? Do I want to control the cubes yet? Do I want to save that for later? There's a little bit of that, but I don't feel like that's like a brain burner. Whereas there are plenty other trick-taking games that I've played that you're like, every card has a power and I'm trying to understand the powers and where's the cheat sheet? And this doesn't need any of that. This is, this I feel like is pretty clean and straightforward for having a trick-taking game with a unique little difference. And so, I appreciate it. I gave it a 7. Well, there you go. That's our thoughts on Bug Council of Backyardia. Uh, until next time, my name is Chris Yee. I'm Wendy Yee. Have yourselves a great picnic, and may the ants ever stay away from your food. <laughs>